Elaine Charlebois is a uh, registered dietitian. We're going to talk about nutrigenomics. Yes, you smell good, by the way. <laughs> yes, in fact, <laughs> nutrigenomics. And you're wondering what this is because I will be taking Kurt's DNA. So this is out of the University of Toronto. Yes. And it's science of looking at your genes and DNA and how certain foods interact with your genes to increase or decrease your risk of chronic disease. So no which kidding. is heart disease, diabetes, because hypertension. We keep hearing about foods that do this, that, or the other thing or don't, right? Yes, so that's why I would like a sample of your saliva, and we will be sending it to U of T. Uh, I have pure later waiting uh, this afternoon, and they'll be testing your DNA. Really? It's all confidential. I'm the only one who knows what number. Until we reveal the results number. in a few weeks. We will reveal the results in a couple weeks, but I just want to go through um, exactly. I had mine done, and these are seven. Was it eye-opening? It was eye-opening. I'm shocked. I have the results here of mine. Really? I'm just going to show you quickly. Look, elevated, 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 elevated. Oh my God. I'm not. I'm elevated not really what? scared. Risk of what? Of having certain diseases if you don't have enough nutrients in your See, diet. You can't, you can't be talking about this right now because my mouth is starting to go dry. Yes, it is. So over here we have vitamin C. Yes. Okay. So we're going to be testing um, if you have C? a variant of vitamin C, meaning if your diet's low in vitamin C, you have a chronic risk of getting diseases affiliated with vitamin C, which is okay. diabetes, mm -hmm. heart disease, mm -hmm. folic acid, right. which is also heart disease related, and cell regeneration, which is in green leafies and also in legumes. Beans, yeah. We've got the whole grains. Now we can isolate a gene for diabetes. So then we're going to see if you have that genetics. And I have that as well. I have six out of the seven. The only one I don't have is saturated fats. Because I'm French Canadian and I guess I could digest them well. More saturated fats in the natural sense. Seriously, as do you think being this. French Canadian has something to do with that? Well, actually, the, yes, the Genesis person asked me about that. And my family's from Gironde, France. And French people tend to have, can metabolize saturated fats better, have higher saturated fats in their diet through pâtés and cheeses and magret canard and things like that. Yet they have lower incidence of heart disease. So we break it what down very well. What was the last well. thing? Something about duck? Yeah, magret canard. But I don't Migrating metabolize. Yeah, Magda, Magda. No. <laughs> I don't metabolize caffeine very well, and I don't metabolize sodium very well. So that means Good Lord, my diet I needs hope to I be low. I metabolize caffeine very well. So we're going to have you spit, and you have to go between the lines. Don't worry; it's only about a couple spits. If you don't get there this right is, now, no, as okay. soon as we're. And I don't want to show this part. No, no. So, Kurt, because of the saliva, and we send what it lines? to. It's just oh, no bubbles. So shake it down. <laughs> Dear God. No, no, shake oh. it down. Shake just like this. Oh. That's, that's it. So we're going to find out if certain foods, and you have the genetic types that's going to react together and see your, are you at the line? Yeah, you're good. I am. I would. No, one more. One <laughs> more bit us. of business? Excuse us. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks and I will reveal, as long as, as long as Kurt is okay with that, to reveal what your genetic. Well, I have no problem uh, with that. Okay, sort of so now all we do, so this is actually stable. You see, we've got this blue solution, it goes down. It says stable. I've got foamy at room saliva today. Yes. It's we'll I was see. Nervous. We'll see. <laughs> and then I just put the little plug on it. Right, and, then and it actually goes it to a lab where? U of T. A U of T. U University doing of Toronto. Study. Yes, they, they are doing the study. Um, Dr. Uh, Amel, uh, Ahmed, he has been doing research in this area th for over 10 years. So and University of Toronto is pretty trendsetters in the yeah, world yeah, of genetic and oh, food totally. and looking at this. And it's the uh, School of Nutritional Science. Seriously, and only they're, they're registered well advanced, dietitians yeah. can do the testing across Canada. They've selected us. Real to quick do that. question. When we find the results, is it, does that mean these are I'll foods talk to you we, before. we should uh, avoid? Like, it depends. are you go going to now avoid some of these things? Well, it's interesting. Since I got mine done, I always pay attention to have more vitamin C in my diet. And I have iron deficiency, so vitamin C is the carrier of iron in the cells. So I'm wondering if all my life I needed to have more vitamin C so that it helps carry iron. Folic acid, for example. Pre-pregnancy, now we give folic acid to women mm -hmm. for spina bifida cleft palate. Right. And I know that now I only have one cup of coffee as opposed to having two because I know that it does affect me. Saturated fats, I'm pretty good with. I had pate yeah. on the weekends, I had some cheeses. You French Canadians. Yeah. Listen, and we got to run, but you're going to be back in a couple of weeks and we'll reveal the, the results. Back. Yes, I'll reveal it to you first and you get to see if that's really how, we, how we're going to reveal it. Because what if you have all seven? It's pretty rare. People I'm know pretty a lot rare. about me anyway. I'm pretty rare. I have six out of the seven. You are certainly rare. <laughs> you may have three. It's usually three or four out of the seven, which is uh, omega-3s as well.